Today, we will discuss rivers. What are the important variables that control flow in a river? Well, they are velocity, width and depth of the river, the discharge, which is the amount of water that's flowing in the river, and you need to think of normal flow versus flood flow, the gradient of the river, how steep the land is underneath the river, and the load of the river. The load of the river is the sediment that's in the river. And there are a couple of terms here that are important. There's bed load. That's material like sand that is carried along the bottom of the river. And then there's suspended load, which is mostly finer grain material like clay that's carried up into the river. And then there are a couple of other terms, like the competence of a river. The competence is the maximum size that a river can carry. And the capacity of a river is the maximum load, the total amount of sediment it can carry. Now, what's interesting about these variables is they're interrelated. For example, as the gradient decreases, what happens to the velocity? It's going to go down. And how is discharge related to width and depth? Well, the higher discharge you have, the wider and the deeper the river is. Think of flooding. The river goes out of its banks. There are a spectrum of different river types, and they generally range from braided rivers to meandering rivers. Start with an alluvial fan, where you have mountains and a river coming out of the mountains. As the gradient decreases, as the river comes out of the mountains, the velocity goes down, the competence goes down, and you get a lot of deposition. Take a look at this picture of Death Valley. You see this alluvial fan in the picture, that's coming out of the mountains and you're getting deposition of coarse material like conglomerates in this alluvial fan. And here's a picture of a conglomerate. Braided rivers often occur just downstream from alluvial fans. Think of somebody with braided hair. And we think of braided rivers as being choked with sediment. What that means is there's more sediment than the water can carry. And the water moves around the sediment and around the bars the other end of the spectrum of river types are the meandering rivers. And these have relatively uniform flow, and most of the material is carried in suspension. And there are a couple of important processes, and one of the most important ones is the river actually meanders. And if you think about it, on the inside loop of a meander loop, you get what's called a point bar. You get deposition there. What happens on the outside of the meander loop? It's called the cut bank, and that should be a clue. That's where you get erosion. So you erode in the cut bank, you deposit on the point bar. Now what can happen because of that erosion on the cut bank, you can actually cut off a meander loop, and what's produced? An oxbow lake. You also have off to the edge of the river, you'll have a floodplain. And between the river and the floodplain, you'll have a levee, which is a hill that's built up at the edge of the river caused by flooding. Now, let's think a little bit about the floodplain. Why is it called a floodplain? It's called a floodplain because it floods. And one of the issues we need to think about here is, is flooding more frequent than it has been in the past? And that's an interesting point. And here's what's crucial about this. When it rains in the country, 80 to 90 percent of the water goes into the ground. However, in an urban area, what do you think happens to all that rain? 80 to 90 percent goes as runoff. It goes into our storm sewers, sewers and into the rivers. Why? Because we have parking lots and we have houses and we have streets. There's no natural soil, or there's not as much natural soil for the water to seep into the ground. So it goes into runoff and it can cause more flooding. That's why in some urban areas we have more flooding now than we had, say, a hundred years ago when there weren't as many parking lots and paved streets.